Hey everyone, it's Eric Bideman for the Polymer Project and Web Components. Just wanted to talk a little bit about what I've been working on lately. Um, we've been working hard on actually making the polymerproject.org site a Polymer app. And so that means things like dog fooding the elements we're working on and dog fooding the libraries, the polyfills, and generally just making it feel more like an application. Uh, so the first thing is actually what we've done is, is given it quite a little bit of facelift, but I wanted to show you guys the fact that we're actually uh, incorporating some of the elements that we've been working on. So for instance, the top nav here, if I inspect it in the dev tools, uh, we can drill down and we can see that the thing is actually a Polymer UI toolbar. So this is an element that uh, basically manages you know, a, a, exactly what you'd expect, a toolbar type functionality. Uh, what's cool about this element is that it exposes a couple attributes. Uh, it implements a responsive design using the responsive attribute you see here. And it's also got uh, some, some nice helpers for Flexbox. So it handles some of the inconsistencies between the different browser versions of Flexbox. Um, so just to show you that, let me get out of the dev tools here. When I uh, scale this browser down, you can see that you know, there's a nice little toolbar here. It's got some zippies here. And that responsive attribute basically just says, OK, when you get to a certain media query, uh, you know, rearrange your, your navigation to be at the bottom here. So it's got this nice little mobile now layout uh, and it's changed the look and feel based on media queries. And so that's really nice that the element has done that for us and just by using that responsive attribute we can tie into that. Uh, the other uh, components on this page is this, uh, this button here basically just implements a nice little Polymer uh, UI menu overlay. Uh, that's another element that we've been working on. Uh, and this thing on the left here, this nav bar that's got these really nice little zippies uh, and this arrow that follows as you sort of traverse into the dock, um, this is also a Polymer element. And so our navigation is basically all polymerized now in web components. You can see that we created a docs-menu item as a custom element and within that you can see the shadow DOM um, and drill into that and you can see basically just a bunch of different uh, submenu items. Maybe it might be easier just to pop over to the markup here and see the left nav. So we have the docs menu element uh, and with inside of it is just um, a bunch of custom elements that we've implemented to make lab navigation left side nav easier. So uh, Polymer UI submenu, within a submenu you have uh, Polymer UI menu items and they can be links or what have you. So this is really cool. Um, something we get out of this for free is data binding, right? This is a feature of Polymer. Uh, the Polymer UI menu exposes a selected uh, property, selected attribute here that we can data bind our Polymer UI arrow to. And so we keep the little arrow in sync with the selection that's made on the left. So you can see as I traverse uh, the nav here, that little arrow also uses a nice little CSS transition transform to get to, uh, to where it needs to go. So another example of uh, us dog fooding some Polymer stuff is if you go to our build page, nice little page with a bunch of widgets on it, a bunch of components. And these are just uh, special web components that we built that uh, tie into our build system to show you the status of uh, each of the builds. Let me uh, find it here. So we have uh, it created a Polymer-build bot uh, and you pass in the different builders, so one for each of the repositories we have. Um, so this is pretty cool because you know these guys are little whippies. Uh, they they do things on their own. Uh, it's all self-contained and basically just using the power of data binding, uh, we can get we can get at the uh, create a bunch of these, stamp a bunch of these out. So for example, uh, I have a UL here. Of, I have a template. And I'm repeating over the repositories and for each of the repositories, right? I'm creating this build bot list custom item and passing in the current uh, repo as, as the project, as that attribute there. And so this is just setting the model from the different repos. So all that markup on the page, all those elements are generated through data binding, which is really awesome. So another thing we wanted to do was make the site really fast. It's a static site generated by Jekyll, um, but you know it's a web app, it's evolving, and we're using Polymer, and it's becoming more and more sort of dynamic and interactive. Um, and so there's no better way to do that than you know make the thing an Ajax site. We have a content site, but uh, it feels like an app. So before we were loading every page, you know, when the user clicks around the nav and everything, uh, but instead what happens now is if you click around, uh, actually just the middle content here is changing, it's being loaded via Ajax. Uh, and so that makes the whole thing really fast. We don't have to load in, you know, the navigation uh, components or load Polymer again, for instance, and have parse all that JavaScript. Uh, the whole thing just feels really fluid and really nice. It's probably easier if I jump over the code here and show you what's going on. Uh, basically, implemented a uh, inject page uh, function 
that uh, makes an XTXR request and pulls down uh, the response as a document, which is really handy because you can you know, uh, work with DOM, you don't have to parse strings or anything, uh, and you can do query selector on the response object, which is really awesome. So we pull out that middle section and then inject that in the page. Uh, one thing we had to do actually was to uh, some of these inline pages, for example, the, uh, the getting started uh, has a bunch of inline demos here. So these are inline demos. Uh, the result here is live on the right side. These are actually um, embedding um, imports, HTML imports in the page. So each of these samples uses an import to pull it in and then run it, which is kind of clever and cool. Um, but one problem is that you know we're sort of in the polyfill world in in most of the browsers now. So what we had to do was basically bootstrap the the uh, injection process when we inject those pages. And so basically just a one simple quick call, we load in a Polymer importer, um, the HTML imports polyfill, and then parse out that document we get back from the XHR. So pretty straightforward, but uh, sort of a caveat to you know loading content dynamically if you have um, HTML imports inside of that. And of course that's going to go away when you know native HTML imports are built in the browsers. This is just sort of something we have to do right now in the polyfill world. So the last thing I want to show you and tell you about is how we're using sort of a build process for web components. A lot of people have asked about this, and so far our answer has been, you know, the community will build it. Um, but we've actually been working on a tool called Vulcanize, uh, or Vulcanizer, and you can find that under more information, tools, and testing. And there's a little blurb about it here, which will basically throw you over to uh, a README and GitHub. And it's basically a little node script um, that we're recommending for people to use. And essentially what it does is bundle up a bunch of custom element definitions, crush those together in a single file, and then you can use that as your single import. So it reduces the number of network requests made by the uh, polyfills, because the polyfills bring in imports right now using XHR. And so you basically just run node vulcanize.js, uh, you give it an input file, it finds all of the imports, it concatenates them into one file, uh, and then it spits it out in this build out file or whatever file name you uh, you specify. So that's really cool. Basically, it's a think of it as a concatenator for your custom element definitions. Uh, and we're actually using that now on polymerproject.org. Um, and so I can show you actually what uh, what we're doing. So following sort of our own you know best practices as they evolve. Um, don't worry about the templating here, but we basically load Polymer, right? Polymer JS, um, and then we load in this single import at the bottom here, this single HTML import, and that's the file that's produced from Vulcanizer. And if we look at that, uh, let me dig into the source here. Copy that link out. And actually look at this guy. You can see what's produced by the tool is essentially every element it finds in, in multiple HTML import definitions, it just uh, concatenates those in a single file. So we have the, the docs menu in here, we have the um, Polymer selector, and all of sort of its dependencies as well. So it'll sort of traverse, um, recursively traverse into your dependencies and then produce this one file. And so again, this cuts down network request. You know, it's not, uh, it, it's not hugely, um, it doesn't gain a huge amount of performance, but it's a good practice. Uh, it's something you should be doing anyway. Um, just like you concatenate your JavaScript and your HTML, we can also sort of concatenate our element definitions into one file. Uh, and so that's how we're using Vulcanizer on the site, and I hope you've uh, enjoyed some of the things we've been doing on polymerproject.org. Look forward to your suggestions, and continue to evolve this site and sort of dog food polymer and web components as they evolve. Thanks.